Hey, at 7 o'clock, I'd like to call a meeting to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Everybody seems to be present. <coughs> uh, approval of minutes, item one, the regular meeting minutes of May 6, 2021 were provided for review. I need a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of May 6, 2021 as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Burkhart? Yes. Mr. Stednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Present. Abstain. Mr. Dixon. Yes. Congress. Motion passed. New new business, audience participation. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on an item that is not on the agenda? Okay. No takers. Presentations, item for council consideration. Approval of audit ending 21 or 31 December 2020. Staff from Adams Brown Strategic Allies and CPAs performed an audit on the financial statements for the city for the year 2020. The 2020 audit year also included a single audit due to the federal funds received from the CARES Act. Staff from the auditing firm are present to answer any questions. Uh, would the council like to ask any questions of the auditors? I'd just like to introduce Danielle Hollingshead. She'll be giving a short presentation and then Jamie Beneshek. They were both here for our audit along with Two other auditors? Were there two? I don't even remember anymore, but um, one other auditor, Alex. And um, it was an interesting year. We had, as it, I said in my memo, a single audit along with <coughs> the normal audit. So I'll turn the floor over to Danielle. Can everyone hear me okay? Could be a little louder. Okay. Could be a little louder. I'm going to share my screen so you can just see as I real quickly flip through this audit report. Um, hopefully I do this right. <laughs> can you can you see my audit? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I, like she said, I'm going to go through it quickly and then if you have any questions, um, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, starting with the, the audit report, I just want to go over the, the main piece of it that's important for you guys to know. Um, on pages one, two, and three, uh, we do issue our uh, opinion as qualified. And this is because of, and I think I, if you remember from last year, um, the city does not have a actuarial, actuarial done on their other post-employment benefits. Um, and so therefore they're not in compliance with GASB number 75. And so we do have to qualify the opinion for that. But if you then skip down a couple of paragraphs, we do give an unmodified opinion um, for the rest of the financial statements we believe are fairly mis are fairly presented. It's just because of that one piece that we have to qualify it. So um, this is the uh, opinion that we give on the financial statements. And if we keep going, um, if you want to do a quick recap of the uh, audit, this is what I recommend reading. Beth puts this together. It's a great financial highlight of everything that happened and what kind of goes on within the financials. Um, so that is on pages uh, four through nine. And then we actually get into the financial statement on page 10. I'm not gonna go through any of the numbers. You can read through those, but as you can see at the end of the year, um, you did have a change in that position of 1,980,326, which was an increase of almost um, double from what it was last year. And one thing I want to point out is we did have a prior period restatement this year. Uh, and you will see there's a footnote in there for it on page 37. But to just quickly explain it, when we were looking at the debt um, of the city, especially with the refunding that was done last year, we realized that the debt that belongs to the business funds um, and the capital assets that went along with that debt was being recorded in the governmental funds. So we did a reclassification between the funds. And so you're gonna see that there. The difference of the 236,000 was for some construction in progress that um, started back in like 2017. Um, it just did not get picked up as construction in progress. And so when we booked the asset, we needed to 
um, reclassify that. So that's what the difference is there. Uh, if you keep going, uh, the, the next financial statement set is for the governmental funds and the proprietary funds. Um, it just gives more detail. The government-wide versus government or uh, fund financial statements, if you want to know the difference how those are put together, you can read the, the footnotes. Um, it gives clear guidance as to how the city combines those. Um, and then we get into the footnotes. And um, I'm not going to go through those, but th this is a, a recap of all the accounting policies that the city follows to put together their financial statements. Um, each number oh. on the, sorry. Each number on the statement of net position has a footnote that goes with it that better explains it. So if you're trying to figure out what a number means, you can come to the footnotes and it will help guide you. Um, the only thing I wanted to point out, uh, one of the other things that we have to look at is state statutes. And so we do have two statute uh, violations during the year. The first one is for um, the state requires that funds are um, transmitted at least 20 days prior to maturity. And when I looked um, at that, they submitted it like 12 days instead of 20. As you remember, they had this finding last year too, but the finding for this year was prior to us completing the audit for last year. So they did fix it for the September payment. This was on the March payment. The second one is the wastewater fund had a negative cash. And so therefore we had a violation um, that they exceeded expenditures. And then the only other footnotes I wanna point out is if you want more on the prior period adjustment that I spoke on, it's right here on page 37. And then we also have a footnote for COVID. And that is just, we don't really know what COVID is going to, how it's going to impact for certain in the future. And so we just put a risks and uncertainties in there um, to cover that. And then we get into required supplementary <clears throat> information. It's just more information on CAPERS and we get into the detail of each fund as well as the budget <clears throat> to ex expenditures recap. Um, you can see how they did in comparison to what they budgeted last year. I'm not going to go through each of those funds, but they just wanted to point, those, point those out there to you. And then as Beth mentioned, we did have a single audit this year because you ex exceeded $750,000 in expenditures. Um, it's a little more in-depth <laughs> audit. So this first independent auditor's report is over internal controls on the financial statements. We do have two deficiencies that I'm going to talk to or explain to you um, in a second. And then the second letter is our opinion over each major federal program. You had one major federal program and that was on the Sparks funds. Um, we did not have any compliance issues with the Sparks funds themselves um, or anything that was materially impacting it. So um, no, no issues with that. Here is the, the schedule of federal awards. And as you can see, of the total amount the city spent last year, we tested about 90, 8% of it, so um, we did test a good chunk of it. And on page 65 are the two deficiencies that we had. The first one is in regards to accounts receivable. Um, and if you remember last year, we had um, doc or had noted that the allowance for doubtful needed to be reviewed. The city took action on that and they did um, do significant work on the allowance and the AR. Unfortunately, when the entry was made, um, it wasn't made correctly between the funds. And so we had some material adjustments we had to make um, to get the funds corrected for the utilities. And then the second one is on capital assets. Um, $5,000 seems like a lot, but um, when you take the report of, five, of vendors or expenses that they um, have spent in the year for $5,000, um, there's a lot of them that they have to look at. And I think we had six that got missed last year. So um, that's just for items that need to be capitalized. And that is the financial statements in a nutshell. And the other thing I wanted to briefly talk to you about, oh geez, ignore that, <laughs> um, is the letter that you have. 
Uh, we just wanted to let you know that we didn't have any um, difficulties during the audit, any disagreements with management. Management was great to work with. Um, they provided us all the information that we needed in a timely manner, and we can't thank them enough for their assistance. Um, we did have two audit recommendations, and I actually have already went over them. The first one was in regards to the bonds that were in the wrong um, funds. It was in, a, in the government fund instead of business funds. And then the second one is in regards to budgeting within the utility funds, um, just making sure they're watching those budgets and making sure they're um, encumbering any expenses at the end of the year that are approved through council. So those were the only two other audit recommendations we had during the year. Any okay. questions for any questions from us? the council? We have no questions. So thank you very much, Danielle. Thank you. Okay, so I need a motion to approve the final audit for the City of Lansing for the year ending December 31st, 2020. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call the roll. Mr. Brungart? Yes. Mr. Stednicka? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Motion passed. Item number three, design services agreement, wastewater town center project. When public improvements for town center were installed in the early 2000s, the existing sewers were not brought up to the appropriate size to accommodate the additional flows generated by the development. <coughs> in order to facilitate growth, approximately 1,400 feet of the furthest downstream sewer lines must be upgraded. The project will be similar in scope to the recent Ward 1 sewer project. However, this project will also re relocate sewers from near to under private structures and move the alignment to the most favorable position. GBA has completed the hydraulic analysis and staff has developed a preliminary alignment, which was included in your packet. A scope and fee for design survey, geotechnical work, and the easement preparation was also included in the agenda packet. I need a motion to approve the scope and services agreement with George Butler Associates for design engineering services for town center trunk sewer replacement project in the amount not to exceed $78,396. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion or got questions a, for Tony? I got a question for Tony. Yes, sir. What happened? <laughs> we were both here back there when that all was developed and bought out by the developer and we put the street in and we did all that. Correct. I so can't did specifically. We, did we misestimate the size of uh, the, the pipe that we needed? I can't specifically speak to that. I wasn't part of the project team that designed those improvements. Uh, that was back when we were part of Public Works. Right. Um, so I'm not sure what decisions were made back at that point in time. Um, but as we moved forward and the land became more marketable and uh, you know, the city purchased the property, we started looking closer at what it was going to take to, to make that work. So. Right. All right, thanks. Yep. Is it in the far north you're talking about, though? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so basically it's from the older part. Right. Right. It's from West K north to yeah. No, the I understand center. it. I understand right. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 honestly, I can't answer Can the question of why they didn't do that. From West I'm sorry. K going north. Okay. West West K. K. I'm West sorry. K. I'm sorry. Going yeah. north. Right. Yeah. They stopped at the northern limits of the town center project, and yeah. that's as far as they went. Well, so. wasn't that when that all come down? Wasn't they talking about adding buying the rest of that until then everything went? Oh well, yeah, I guess you weren't here. Miss Trigle, I, I they, they did. We, they was talking about going on further north, and that might have been why there was probably a discussion, and then that's when everything went south on the whole project. Yeah, they could have been, I unbeknownst to me. So they were going to go ahead and buy the other. It's, they come out, them other people want to know why they didn't. Why would they buy their house <laughs> on further north? So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions of Tony? No? We have a motion and a second. Call the roll. Mr. Brungart? Yes. Mr. Stednicka? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed. Item number four is a change order request 2021 capital improvements program. Due to extreme favorable bids for the annual mill and overlay program, <coughs> adding additional streets to the program was discussed at the April 29th work session. Staff contracted Little Joe's Asphalt and requested pricing for additional streets. <clears throat> the additional streets would be Bittersw Bittersweet Lane, Sage Street, Bittersweet Court, and Pine Ridge Court. 
I need a motion to approve change order number one from Little Joe's Asphalt for the additional mill overlay work in the amount not to exceed $184,770. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call up. Uh, any discussion on this one? Sorry. <laughs> no questions? Okay. Mr. Call Brunkert. a roll, please. Yes. Yes. Mr. Stunica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Thank you. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Okay, item number five is the sanitary sewer easement. This is just for information only. This, I, this item is information only and does not require any action. Green and My Realtors, Inc. is working to develop the parcel in the northwest corner of Santa Fe and Fairlane. To move forward with the development of the parcel already zoned as R4, they have executed a sanitary sewer easement for public sewer to be installed on the property. It's just for information because if you see them moving, you guys remember we had the uh, rezoning. Thing. This is on the parcel that was actually zoned R4, so if you hear anything about that, that's what that's yeah. about. Okay, item number six is executive session, non-elected personnel. I need a motion to recess into executive session to discuss personnel matters pursuant to the non-elected personnel matter exception KSA 75-4319 Bravo 1 for 10 minutes beginning at 17, 17 and seven, uh, seven, what? 17. Nine. I'm sorry, seven, 17. Seven, 17. I love trying to combine military and uh, civilian time. So seven, 17 <laughs> to seven, 27. So moved. Second. Mr. Brungart. Yes. Mr. Stednica. Yes. Mr. Trinkle. Yes. Mr. Kirby. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. Mr. Garvey. Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Yeah. Stick around for a second. Move to return to open session. Second. And a motion and a second. Call the roll. Mr. Brungart? Yes. Mr. Stednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Okay, item number seven, executive session for economic development. What? Oh. <laughs> I need a motion to recess in the executive session to review economic development activities hmm. pursuant to the discussion of confidential data relating to financial affairs or trade secrets of corporations, partnerships, trusts, and individual proprietorships, exception KSA 754319, <coughs> Bravo 4. For 15 minutes beginning at 728 and ending at 1743. So I'm sorry, 743. So I moved. Mr. Brungart. I don't know what, what I voted for you. Can I motion is <laughs> call the roll. Mr. Brungart. Yes. Mr. Stenica. Yes. Mr. Trinkle. Yes. Mr. Kirby. <laughs> Mr. Kirby. Yes. Uh, Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. That's when he says go, do it again. I move we return to open session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call the roll. Mr. Brungart? Yes. Mr. Stednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. So I need a motion to return to executive session to discuss economic development. I mean, you kind of do, but... Uh, to recess really to executive to. session to review economic development activities pursuant to the discussion of confidential data relating to financial affairs or trade secrets of corporations, partnerships, trusts, and individual proprietorships, exception KSA 75-4319, Bravo 4, for, for 10 minutes, beginning at 7.44 and ending at 7.54. So moved. Second. Mr. Brunkart. Go ahead. Yes. Mr. Stednica. Yes. Mr. Trinkle. Yes. Mr. Kirby. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. Mr. Garvey. Yes. Mr. Bueller. Yes. Mr. Dixon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're recording. Yeah. 
Need a motion to return open session. I move we return to open session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call a roll. All happened. Mr. Brungart? Yes. Mr. Studnicka? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Okay, let's see. Reports. Anything to report? From debate. Nope. Tim? So uh, we have a, a staff committee that's talking about the uh, American Rescue Plan funds a little bit. Lansing's allocation for the American Rescue Plan funds is about $1.67 million. Uh, some of the uh, eligible costs include sewer, storm sewer, broadband. Um, so I know our committee has really thought about ideas that you know, would, would benefit Lansing. If you guys remember, I think uh, it was really in the early stages of COVID, we talked a little bit about broadband and things like that. Um, but, you know, the, the CARES funding, it was such a tight timeline. We really decided we couldn't do anything with broadband with only three or four months. Uh, since the ARP funds have like a four-year deadline, um, our staff is looking at options of, of what we could do to maybe uh, – improve broadband access in Lansing um, so that we're, we're having some phone calls right now and we'll, we'll try to report back to you guys soon but I know that was something that we'd heard about um, maybe a year or so ago I remember I think we had a couple people at a meeting and do you guys remember also a year or two ago we did the speed tests you remember that does that ring a bell to anyone yeah. I know a lot's happened in the last 18 months um, but so anyway our committee is talking a little bit about broadband and, and what it would take to uh, get faster internet in Lansing. So that's one thing that's on the docket. Um, another thing that the committee is talking about um, is how sewer-related projects are eligible for ARP funds. So we're talking about projects that can, um, you know, maybe spur growth in Lansing or, you know, what, what would be best for Lansing long-term. Um, and some of these ideas will probably pass along to you all at the next work session as well. Um, but we're just kind of kicking around ideas of what we can do to help jumpstart things in Lansing. And if, if sewer um, in a certain area can help jumpstart development in Lansing, that's something we're kicking around. Uh, so more to come on that next week. Um, the last thing that I want to go over with you guys, this doesn't have anything to do with ARP funds, but it's really been an exciting week and a half, 10 days in Lansing. Um, Mutual Savings uh, has a beautiful new building on K7. That's open now. Uh, 10 and 2 Coffee Shop just down the road just opened. Uh, Club Car Wash is going to be opening, I believe, next Thursday. So you look at that, three brand new businesses in Lansing that have opened in the last week and a half. So uh, really thankful for the great job Matt Schmitz and his staff have done. Uh, but also you guys have done a fantastic job making Lansing a business-friendly community. Uh, so just a lot of really positive things going on in Lansing right now. And, uh, and yeah, I'd really encourage you guys to check out Mutual Savings, check out 10 and 2 Coffee Shop, um, you know, check out those new businesses because it's very exciting. So that's all I have. Car Wash is getting ready to open up. Yep, Thursday, I think, next all Thursday. Car Washes. Yep, they said it'll have over 800 car washes the first day. Probably mm. supposed to. Okay, thanks, Tim. Gary. Go around the horn. Uh, is Beth here? Oh, she snuck out. Okay. Well, I want to thank Beth. Uh, I had a call from one of the auditors. I guess they just kind of pick a, a council member. So I was called and talked to Jamie. Uh, and she, her message to me was just how transparent and attentive Beth and uh, was at getting everything that they needed for the audit. So uh, kudos to her and the job she did. So that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Gary. Don. I don't have anything there. Okay. I have uh, a couple things. Uh, I, it was brought to my attention. I don't. I haven't really had a chance to pay any attention, but the new sign that we've got put out here. Somebody's saying that it's. Everybody likes the sign. They like when you're setting it to light, you can read everything that's on it. Is there a way that you can increase the font of the, the lettering on it just a little bit? 
Yeah, we try to make it as big as we can. If we have a lot of like text, I, we only have so much. Well, that's, that's so, like, they, so you, like you, the vaccine clinic. It, yeah, yeah, if you're looking at the vaccine clinic information, because there's so much text, we can only go so big with it being seen. But we are trying to make it as big as possible, so that way everyone can see. That's it what they, 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 they like the shine. They think it's a great improvement. But it's if they catch yeah. it, catch it coming through the light. It's hard to catch all the writing on it because it seems like it's smaller than maybe. Yeah. We're still small. we're still learning how to use it, so we appreciate the feedback we have. Well, we try to make it as big as we can to fit within the screen, but I'll keep it up, okay. make it bigger. <laughs> and then my question would probably be with Matt, I guess afterwards. I have a question on reference this screen to that screen and some of the. Yeah, <laughs> is there something we can do about that? I know my buddy here, he was squinting too, so, I mean, he's, uh, we can certainly check in, but, can I, we, I was reading we could, the big words. We could put his chair, <laughs> yeah. we could put his chair right yeah. in front of that big the, 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 the words, the words come out pretty decent, but when they get into them graphs, they just look like they're all together. You can't, you can see them up there, but you can't see them here right in front of you. I don't mean, know if there's, is that something that we just need to adjust? Probably. We can certainly take a look at it and see what we can do. Okay. We may be able to adjust some resolution settings or something like that to make it a little bit bigger, make it cleaner, that you guys can okay. see it easier. We'll definitely look at Don, it. Don was having trouble too, but he just wouldn't. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you, Dave. Gene. Or you could go to the eye doctor. Yeah. I just did, buddy. <laughs> I, had a, I read an interesting article this morning about the state of Kansas during the last year, give or take, Lost a lot of qualified county health directors over the COVID thing. Uh, it was a very stressful time for all, everybody, but particularly for all them for a number of reasons. Some of them even receiving physical threats of violence, and uh, which is a shame. Of course, according to the article, the whole state lost a good group of people. Uh, with that in mind, I want to again publicly, I've talked to Jamie Miller, thank him and his crew for a bang up job. And I it was one of them jobs where they weren't gonna make everybody happy or even come close. So to them, again, to Jamie and everybody that's assisted with that, uh, just thank you. And I know a lot of us feel that way. I think we need to be a little bit more public with it. And I would also like to thank the school district. Uh, there's still school districts in the area who are shut down, going virtual, and, and it would, by all appearances, uh, Lansing School District had a pretty good year. So we want to thank everybody that was involved in that, kept schools open and going, and, and kept things safe for everybody. So thanks, and my hats off to both of those uh, great organizations and the work that all the people associated with them did. That's all I have. Well put. Uh, Marcus? Yeah, I'd just like to pile on with what Carrie started with uh, with Beth. Uh, great job, Beth. She's already gone home, but great job to her and her team and staff and working with the uh, Adams and Brown for our city audit. That's excellent. I'm really excited about uh, what the city administrator mentioned on the faster internet within the city. Uh, whatever we got to do to get that going and moving forward, absolutely, we can't get that going fast enough. That's that's excellent. And great news on the three brand new businesses. I'm all for it, and can't wait. Like uh, like Gene said, can't wait for the new car wash to get in here as well. So the ten and two and the new bank, that's great stuff. So Memorial Day is coming up, Mayor, and uh, it's a, it's a time for us in uh, in a couple of weeks before we have our next Memorial Day will be here before we have our next meeting. So um, I'm uh, I just ask that we take the time out and uh, remember those veterans that served. Um, as well as Youth Fishing Day. So I'll end on a happy thing, right? Youth Fishing Day is coming up. So uh, if we haven't got enough folks that are already volunteering and signing their, their youth up for the Fishing Derby, <clears throat> get out there and, and get signed up for the Youth Fishing Derby. And uh, let's, let's make that an exciting event, all right? And then the last thing is, um, if I can talk to someone after this on the 4th of July activities, I might engage on that. Thanks. All I got, Mayor. All right, thanks, Marcus. Jesse. Yeah, uh, good job on the audit, Beth, and her team. Uh, I'm sure it's stressful to go through that, and looks like they did a good job with it. And it's just great to hear that there are 
that our team does a, a efficient job and is transparent in everything they do. So <clears throat> uh, the new businesses are exciting. You know, I can't wait to the car wash to be open. That's for sure. Um, you know, I remember when the car wash behind the bank closed, and you know that was kind of a bad deal because that was the only car wash in town. So now we're going to have another car wash that's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm sure it'll be really busy, especially being behind Quick Trip. That's going to really help them. So that'll help our, our uh, revenue, I'm sure, for a little bit. But uh, yeah, exciting things are happening in Lansing. You know, I, I just look forward to many more new businesses coming. So well, that's all I've got. All right. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, Great. I'm going to jump on that Sam Bagwagon. Ditto, 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 ditto. <laughs> uh, this weekend's the garage sale, too, right? Yep. Yep. So the oh, citywide yeah. garage sale this weekend. I, I know that it may rain, but I know there's a lot of hardcore garage sailors out there. And, uh, Mayor, on this day in 1899, the very first traffic ticket in the United States was written to a cab driver in New York City going 12 miles an hour. Sure, what, man? That's all I have. <laughs> Are you it was okay. written to Don. I was going to say, what, what did it cost you, Greg? Say again? What did it cost you? It wasn't oh, me, it was you? Don. Okay. <laughs> Brian? So uh, nothing for me, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, move that uh, we adjourn our meeting at this time. Second. Second. Prior to that. Yeah. I'm sorry, we had, we had one other thing regarding the fireworks show that we just wanted to ask you guys about and get your feedback about. So <clears throat> in the past when we've had Lansing Days, we've always had, or we've tried to have beer sales during Lansing Days. Since we've combined everything together into one event at Independence Days, what is the feeling towards having beer sales for that event? Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. We will do our best to make that happen. Is, they, uh, is it going to be where they sell it, or are we going to have to man that? That's the question mark right now. Hey. Finding a caterer. There, there, Sarah has reached out to ABC. There aren't any caterers registered in Leavenworth County. Is that correct? That is correct. So we'd have to bring somebody in from out of county, or we may have to do it ourselves. There's, we're still working through the logistics of how to make that happen. But with the direction I've heard tonight, we'll continue down that path and do our best to make it happen. <laughs> I've worked it before. It gets pretty busy, I think, if we can get somebody to do it. I would rather have a caterer do it, to be yeah. perfectly honest. But if we can't and we want to move forward, we could look at having staff do it. Okay. What about what about a local business doing? That's one of the options we're considering as well. Yeah. That's That would be the preferred option, actually, because I'd rather have a local business come out there and make some money off of it, you know. Any other items not on the agenda that we'd like to discuss? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we uh, take a motion, yeah. okay. um, just like to recognize Representative Dave French for coming tonight. Appreciate it, sir. And now we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's already on. Yeah. Oh, so that's we already, right. We already had a motion. We have a motion. Okay. And a so second. now we're starting. All right. All right. So call the roll. Mr. Burkhardt? Yes. Mr. Sednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? <laughs> yes. Mr. Kirby? Bravo. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Garvey? No. <laughs> Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. No. Wow. No, we need to do this. I didn't even mess it up.